Very familiar psalm, Psalm 23. If you don't have a Bible, slip up your hand and Pastor Dave will get one into that hand so you can follow along. Psalm 23. For many of you, you could probably not even open the Bible and recite these verses. Very familiar. Psalm 23. Before we get started, um, for those, especially for those who are going to the Ronald McDonald House Ministry tonight, but for the whole congregation to remember to pray, I got this letter from Joanne Karras, the Family Services Director of the Ronald McDonald House. She says this, Dear Calvary Chapel Church, on behalf of the families of the Ronald McDonald House of Pittsburgh, I would like to thank you for the delicious dinner. That was from last month. It was greatly appreciated. Your contribution helps us to maintain a home away from home for the families of seriously ill children receiving medical treatment at area hospitals. It is only with support from the community that we are able to continue to provide a home for all families regardless of their ability to pay. Again, from everyone at the Ronald McDonald House, I would like to thank you for your support. Sincerely, Joanne Karras. So it, this, is, this is greatly appreciated going. And for a couple of years, uh, especially myself, and I know within the context of the, of the elders' meetings and so forth, we prayed about, Lord, show us how to reach out to the community. Show us how you want us to reach out. And we prayed. And, and to be honest with you, I felt for a while like, man, what are we doing? What, what's, you know, nothing seems to be happening. We, we're doing something wrong here or whatever. But the Lord has opened up what I see right now is three primary outreaches to people who are in need. The first is the Mercy Ministry, which is a little over a year old now, once a month, right here. You wouldn't recognize this place just two days ago. Um, it was filled with probably about 75 or 80 people uh, from up in the community up above who are primarily uh, here in America, having left their home country, whether that be Nepal, whether that be Burma, whether that be Iraq, uh, Somalia. Um, I think there are some others there that I've probably missed. Jason, correct me if I've missed any important ones. Got most of them. And and they are here and, and have left. Uh, Krista was sharing with one woman that she's come to be friends with and... Uh, you know, we think of refugees as, you know, a poor, ignorant kind of thing. This woman was an architect in Iraq. Very well known, very studied, very intelligent. But they had to leave Iraq because they helped the Americans. They helped the Allies, and that put their lives in danger. And they're now living in a very small apartment right up the hill from here. And uh, she's got a job at Home Depot as a cashier. Imagine how frustrating that would be on top of an entire culture change, an entire language change, on and on and on. And God's just opened up the door for us to be able to uh, minister to them and to share love and comfort and just give them a time of having some fun as well as share the reason why we're doing it. So it's, a, it's a tremendous opportunity to be able to share. The second one that has opened up, and this will be our third time going, is, is the Ronald McDonald House Ministry. And God put that on our hearts and especially on uh, Paula and Roger's hearts because of their knowledge of what it's like to be from out of town and dealing with a very ill child. And uh, it, it's a tremendous opportunity and God's opening up some, some more doors there to maybe do some, some more interesting things like a little welcome package and, and be able to really bless people with the Word of God and with a little bit of food. For These are people, again, who are transported out of their locale and, and stuck here in very uh, difficult circumstances, some facing uh, you know, tragic circumstances perhaps with their children. And we have the opportunity to minister and to share the love of Christ. And the third one is just beginning, and that is the outreach to the troops in Afghanistan who are in need and need a touch point. And, and are, you know, these are, are young men and women who are facing death every day. I mean, right in front of their face. We all face death every day. We just fool ourselves that we're not. You know, everyone sitting here, perhaps, but but they face it every day and know it. And to have some touch point of uh, an encouragement from a church family in Pittsburgh, and uh, those are those are tremendous opportunities, and we want to be faithful to those. 
So if you can participate in them, participate in them. If you can't, pray. Because that is even more important than being there. Of course, we have to have enough people to do all the stuff that needs to be done. But more important than that, pray. Pray that these efforts are not just giving people a, a can of soup or uh, an encouragement, but we are hopefully having the opportunity again and again and again to effectively share the love of Jesus Christ with them. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you that you did not just create us and set us in this world and walk away, but that you have continued to interfere into the affairs of men, whether it be at a national, international level, or Lord, you interfered with each one of us, and that's why we're here. You stopped us from going the way that seemed right, but would lead us to death. And you led us into the paths of righteousness. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we know that we need you. And so this morning, as we look to your word, as we learn from what King David had to share, I pray that you would seal it to our hearts and that you would do your good work in us this morning, that we might be equipped for you to do your good work through us. We'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalm 23, the Good Shepherd. You know, you call me Pastor Kevin, uh, or some of you just call me Kevin, and that's that's fine. Don't Don't call me Reverend. Don't call me Most Holy Reverend. Don't call me Father except for a select few who are here. But that's usually dad anyway, or pop, or something like that. But pastor, did you know that pastor literally comes from the 13th century Latin word for shepherd? For shepherd. That's what you call me when you call me Pastor Kevin. You're calling me, hey, shepherd. Hey, shepherd Kevin. What does a shepherd do? This is from the uh, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. It says, The chief care of the shepherd is to see that the sheep find plenty to eat and to drink. The flocks are not fed in pens or folds, but summer and winter must depend upon foraging for their sustenance. You see, unlike the pictures that we see of, you know, the uh, cattle today or the chickens that, you know, get to move within a space about this big and just trough in front of them and all day long so they're nice and fat so we can get some great juicy burgers out of them or chicken tenders, that's not the way sheep are taken care of even today in most of the world and certainly not in the time that we're talking about in biblical times. They had to go out to forage. They didn't bring the food in. They had to go out to forage. And it would help us. How many shepherds do we have here? And I mean in the, in the physical sense, not the spiritual sense. Anybody ever taken care of sheep? Anybody? No? Me neither. Except you guys. Well, we need to understand something about the nature of sheep before we get into this psalm. First of all, they're helpless. Sheep are helpless. In, in this society, they would gather sheep and goats together and keep sheep and goats you know, together, raise them together and so forth. And the goats would hunt out the feeding grounds. They, they could do that on their own pretty much. But sheep are helpless and have to be led to the place where they can eat or they won't find it. Perhaps they'll stumble upon it, but they're literally, I've talked to a couple of people who have taken care of sheep and, and their word for it is stupid. Sheep are stupid animals. They don't know how to find some place to, to eat. They, they don't have that capability. 